Okay. Hey, thank you uh, everyone for for uh, joining in on this uh, on this Friday webinar. Uh, we've got a, we've got another good topic today, and it's something that we've been working very hard on, and we just want to share uh, uh, share it with you. Uh, one one thing that the um, pandemic has taught us is that our supply chains are not as robust as uh, we thought they were. They just were not reliable, and this this whole COVID thing started out as a demand disruption, and then it quickly turned into a supply disruption. And, and that taught us another thing in that the solution is not as easy as we thought it would be. Um, we, we have to address both sides of the equation and any one tool is not going to get you there. It's not gonna resolve the problem. So we were looking at all of the tools at our disposal and uh, we came up with one that, that helps us. And that's the one that we're going to talk about today. Uh, Connects is one of the tools that's available to us and it creates the, uh, or in increases the visibility to our total supply chain. Uh, if you're a supplier who's wanting to share your capabilities, or if you are a manufacturer wanting to make better sourcing decision, Connects is a, a tool that you're definitely going to want to look at. Uh, it's available to every Tennessee manufacturer, and we've invited Alan Davis and, and Justin Bott to share uh, that tool with us and to tell us a little bit more about it and its capabilities. Now, Alan, he's going to be the first speaker, and he's the president and CEO of I-5 Services, and they have the goal of helping uh, industries through creative uh, technical solutions, of which Connects is one of those. Justin is the VP of Marketing with I-5, and he's worked with um, in the Utah, Utah nonprofits, and he's helped manufacturers, um, actually startup uh, manufacturers, and he's mentored them, hundreds of them, uh, at getting them to grow within the volatile environment. So he's gonna be the second speaker uh, from I-5. So with that, what I'd like to do is hand this over to Alan and Justin to let them tell us a little bit more about the system. Alan? Terrific. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you all for attending today. Hopefully, as we go through, uh, there will be some great information for you. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I know Felicia will be watching that for us and keeping an eye on it, making sure that um, we are bringing up those questions and we're able to answer them. Our goal today really is to share some information that we believe will be helpful to you. And uh, that comes about best when we're collaborating and, uh, and kind of interacting with one another. And I know it's a little harder on virtual, but um, it is something that we hope to be able to accomplish today and being able to answer questions for you. I'm going to start with just a little bit of a presentation. And that presentation's uh, really aimed at giving you a little bit of background and answering some of the questions as to why and uh, why this particular solution, why it's being impactful or having an impact for manufacturers. And then um, Justin will give you just a little bit of a demo of the system. And we'll talk about um, the, when that comes live for you, how to get access and all those kinds of things to answer some of those questions toward the end. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now, make sure that, uh, that test we did earlier, Felicia, is still working. Terrific. And if you'll go ahead and go, yep, perfect. That's exactly what we need. You got to it. Say. Yep, thank okay. you. You're very welcome. So um, the solution we're talking about today, today is Connects Tennessee. It is a platform that's been built specifically by and for manufacturers and to connect manufacturers within the state of Tennessee and also to give you the ability to connect um, nationally to manufacturing ecosystem across the country. So one of the things that has really brought this about has been uh, the time we spent listening to manufacturers. We've been at this for about 11 years now, and it started off um, with some workshops with manufacturers where we sat down with large, medium, and small size manufacturers for four months, every other Friday for four hours in a conference room and really hashed out why do we need this? And they shared loads of challenges. Uh, wow, that came much, much too fast there. <laughs> uh, loads of challenges that they were facing. Uh, I'm sure you'll recognize some of these uh, challenges that we're facing today as well. 
But uh, one of the big ones was just a lot of the procurement supply chain challenges that we're facing. Um, and we listened, right? We really tried to understand how can we help to solve this? And we looked at it both from the small, medium-sized manufacturer challenges as well as from the large manufacturing challenges and uh, tried to figure out what were those uh, greatest challenges? How could we best help it? And um, I'll just share a little bit about what the manufacturers shared with us. They said, look, um, we need to be able to search and find one another based upon our capabilities. So you can go to uh, loads of places and maybe find someone based on their products or possibly a NAICS code. But to be able to search and find a manufacturer on capability didn't exist. In fact, um, we asked the question directly to the manufacturers, why don't you just go to ThomasNet or MFG.com or you know, Sam.gov or Google or any of the solutions that existed and find what you're looking for. And they responded this way. They said, look, you go and try to find all the women-owned plastic injection molding companies in the state, and then you'll know exactly why that solution doesn't exist. And it's absolutely true. There wasn't a solution that would allow us to have that kind of visibility, that type of search uh, capability to find manufacturing capabilities. And the, I think the more telling part of that was we had a large manufacturer that was participating in the workshops with us. They were ready to award a $70 million contract. They said, look, our buyers have, have scoured all over. In this case, um, we were in the state um, of Utah. And they said, our buyers have scoured the entire state. We cannot find anyone in the state who has these capabilities. Um, and we said, okay, great. We have a prototype built at this point. We have data loaded into that. Let's at least run a search and see if uh, we're able to help you find someone who might have those capabilities. Sure enough, two miles from their facility was the exact company that they needed. They just didn't know they were there. And example after example of that continued to come up as we launched initially in the state. Then um, the manufacturers came back and said, look, this is great, but we can't always find everything we need in the state. So we also need to be able to search nationally. Will you expand this nationally? Which we did. We partnered with the National Association of Manufacturers to do that. And then made sure that um, you could search local first. Um, goal being to help you find the local resources and then be able to expand those searches um, if you're unable to find exactly what you're looking for. So you'll see just some of the uh, uh, solution points that uh, we came up with as we go through the uh, presentation today. Um, the, some of the challenges from the large manufacturing perspective are different than the challenges from the small manufacturing perspective. Um, but the two of them together really, and making sure that we're connecting and solving those problems um, at the same time is really vital. Um, we found many solutions that are solving for different viewpoints. So for example, um, well, I'll take it back to what the manufacturers told us. They said, look, it can't be a government solution. It can't be an academic solution. It has to be an industry-led and industry-driven solution. The reason is, is because um, you know, everyone kind of looks at it from their own perspective and what they need. We need someone who will look at it from the manufacturing perspective and provide what we need. And that's uh, the premise that has driven the development of the Connects platform. So here in uh, Tennessee, we've got uh, the Connects Tennessee platform. It is officially launching June 22nd. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a moment. Uh, but it gives you very uh, localized help and support and visibility into the local manufacturing ecosystem. Um, it's really built and designed to help strengthen your business from a number of different uh, perspectives. It can help you find um, opportunities for your business. It can help you find uh, supply, and particularly if you need to diversify a supply chain or find some alternate sources. It gives you the ability to post um, and respond to RFPs, RFQs, RFIs, other needs, uh, helps you to be able to uh, shorten those supply chains. Um, I will also talk just for a moment about the importance of collaboration. So another question we ask is why have we not solved this for our country previously? Um, why is that we don't already have a solution that serves our country? And uh, there were a number of answers to that question, but one that really stood out to me the most was that we never really worked together well. So we have 
databases all over the place and we continue to start more of them all the time, but we haven't all leaned in together on one. And so we asked what was it we could do to help everyone be able to lean in together. And so they wanted to make sure it was accessible to all manufacturers, that we protected the manufacturer's data, that uh, we built it in collaboration with those who support manufacturing. So um, I mentioned the National Association of Manufacturers at the national level, um, uh, UTCIS uh, in Tennessee, as well as the chamber and others um, at the state level are those who are supporting you um, from in the state of Tennessee and many others who collaborate together and have leaned in together um, at the state level. Typically, we see participation from economic development, chambers of commerce, PTAX, and many others who all lean in together to help make sure that we are helping the manufacturing and manufacturers in our states. So in this case, in Tennessee. So I'm just gonna to touch uh, briefly on this. Uh, Justin will show you how it works here in just a moment, but I wanted to share with you some of the things manufacturers asked for. They wanted powerful search. They wanted it to, it to be as simple to use as Google, just type in a keyword, have relevant results return in less than a second. They also said, we wanna be able to filter things down. We wanna be able to narrow in and find exactly what we're looking for. Um, so somewhat like what you would find in Amazon, right? You've got filters along the left-hand side. You can check them, which will help narrow in your results. They wanted to have detailed and informative profiles that really allowed people to be able to see capabilities, allow you to see other manufacturers' capabilities and allow other manufacturers to see your capabilities. Um, and that really um, touches on a lot of different salient data points. And, and Justin will show that to you in the demo. Uh, next really is uh, the ability to be able to see your supply chain. Uh, we've been working with the Air Force for a number of years now on the top nine areas of risk that exist within our supply chains in the United States. And one of the biggest things that we found were that um, supply chain visualization tools were only available to some of the largest manufacturers in our country because they're very expensive um, to run and to acquire. And so um, we wanted to make sure that there was, as a part of the solution, the ability to better visualize the supply chain, get uh, understanding of that supply chain, and then also be able to see the risks that exist within it, and to be able to find alternate suppliers when there are risk, risks that exist within it. And there'll be other opportunities to go into that in greater detail, and Justin will touch on that in the demo as well. Um, these supply chain tools and being able to find alternates, and we knew it needed to be super simple and manufacturers said, hey, look, this has got to be able to help us find those alternate supplies, um, tell us how far they are from our facility, um, give us links to the profile pages, allow us to be able to see what the capabilities are and be able to uh, create diversification within the supply chain very easily. Um, the other one that they really had indicated was of importance and of value was uh, Exchange Center, the ability to be able to uh, put an RFP, RFQ, RFI, or other type of a need out there and have other manufacturers respond indicating that they're capable of doing that and having a system that would help that connection um, to occur organically and intelligently so that it became easy for everyone to be able to uh, find the capabilities and find the manufacturers that they needed. Um, Again, one other part of that on the uh, Exchange Center is just the ability to be able to notify other businesses. So um, not only to be able to create an RFP, RFQ, or RFI and have someone come and look at it, but also be able to create a distribution that says, look, I wanna notify companies who are, you know, have an SBA designation of woman-owned, veteran-owned, minority, or whatever it happens to be, and also be able to say, uh, I want them to be companies that work with, you know, a specific material or have a specific NAICS code and know that the system can now go out and intelligently notify those companies. And from the reverse side, as a small business in particular or a small medium sized manufacturer, to know that when you put your information in there, the system can intelligently bring opportunities to you that are relevant to your capabilities. I just wanted to share two quick case studies with you and then we'll turn it to Justin for uh, the demo. Uh, first off, uh, I'll share with just a little bit about a Northrop Grumman opportunity. They came to us and said, look, we need um, 16 qualified suppliers over the next eight weeks. Um, they need to be 
machine shops with a specific type of uh, or a specific piece of equipment. Um, they need to have machine or excuse me, welding capability within the shop. They need to have an AS9100 certification and be JCP and ITAR certified. Uh, they need to uh, be familiar with DFAR and FAR requirements, and they have to be able to demonstrate their efforts towards CMMC. And uh, by the way, we only have an hour a week to perform those interviews, so we need half hour interviews each. Can you do that for us? <laughs> it was a massive request, and um, we said, you know, we think we actually could help you with that. And so we used the system to notify manufacturers who had the right equipment and the right um, certifications. And then we also used the partner network that we have worked so uh, long to build across our country. We reached out to states all over the country um, asking for assistance and helping to find uh, small, medium-sized manufacturers who had the right requirements, who could respond. And the result was we lined up 16 qualified suppliers over eight weeks. 12 of them were issued RFPs or RFQs and uh, subsequent, co subsequent contracts. Um, great thing about that was, is it gave a lot of small businesses access to buyers within Northrop Grumman who had never been able to get um, in front of them previously. It has been really impactful um, to our small, medium-sized manufacturers and the large manufacturers have indicated, you know, we've never had a solution that would help us so effectively find those manufacturers that we are looking for and that we would like to do business with. I'm going to give you the reverse side of that. Um, and this happens to be a, a rural Wyoming manufacturer. Uh, we actually identified them as having the right kinds of equipment and uh, the right type of capability to deliver for that Northrop Grumman contract. However, they lacked an, an AS9100 certification. So we worked with the MEP in the state of Wyoming who helps manufacturers with those certifications. The MEP was able to help them within nine months actually get certified. And we then were able to get them the interviews with the Northrop Grumman buyers, and they were awarded one of the contracts. A really fantastic story because um, they were moving from an industry of oil and gas where they had not previously, uh, or where they had previously been working, but where the uh, opportunities within oil and gas had started to dwindle. They were looking to diversify into another sector that they were not necessarily familiar with in aerospace and defense, but that they had a tremendous amount of interest in entering. So it helped them be able to move from one sector into another in terms of the services they provide and products that they provide. And uh, it also helped them become certified in areas that they had not previously um, been certified, opening up new business opportunities for them in many ways. So with that, um, is Justin, Justin, are you on? Yes, can you Okay, me? there you are. <laughs> so Justin, we'll have you uh, go ahead and if you will, I'll stop sharing and I'll let you uh, go ahead and share and do a quick demo and then we can do some Q&A. So while Justin switches that over um, to his screen and brings that up, are there any questions I can answer for you initially before uh, he gives us a little better understanding of what the uh, functionality of the system works like. Uh, you indicated that you, uh, in, in the Norfolk Grumman situation, that you, you go out and look for suppliers. What is the process that you use to do that? Yeah, thank you. Um, the first uh, way that that happens is we help the large manufacturers, um, and this could be Large, medium, or small, by the way. So um, everyone needs someone else um, to supply something to them. So, um, but in that example, we help their buyers put the post in the exchange center in Connects that indicated exactly what they were looking for, which included the restrictions, right? Of what we call them restrictions, but they're basically the things that are required um, in order to be able to uh, deliver that contract. And then we sent that notification out through the system. So as the notification goes out, what it does is it identifies those who meet that criteria. So in this case, it identified machine shops who had vertical turning lathes that could mill parts 30 to 80 inches in diameter. Um, it also looked for those who had AS9100 certifications. 
And uh, those are the ones who are automatically notified by the system. So the more information you have in the system, the easier it is for the system to be able to identify the correct opportunities for you. So I will encourage you, and as Justin goes through, he'll show you how this works, but I would encourage you to make sure you have as much information about your company in there as you can, because it really helps with the matching process. Um, but we took it one step further because we held what we call a connection event. And that, all that means is we do some manual effort in addition to what the system does um, to make sure we're reaching even more manufacturers. So those who are not necessarily represented in the system yet. The way that we did that is we had our partners, or I'm sorry, we notified our partners indicating to them what Northrop Grumman was looking for and asked if they knew of any manufacturers in their area who were capable of delivering and encouraged them to have those manufacturers come into the system and fill out their profile, respond to Northrop Grumman so the Northrop Grumman buyers could see them and see their uh, profiles, see their capability statements, and uh, we could line up interviews for them. And by doing both of those efforts together is how we found uh, enough qualified suppliers to be able to fulfill that request. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay, wonderful. Other questions I can answer? Yeah, I have one brief question and the yeah. answer is probably obvious, but I just wanna answer the question. Um, if there are two companies, 25 person company and a 50 person company, this model is completely transferable to that arrangement, correct? Yeah. Um, it, that, that's the obvious answer. And I just wanted to make sure you're dealing with a large prime in companies. And I just want to know, is everything one-to-one -one matching tr completely transferable to two companies that are small? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and that's a kind of a common thing that happens as well. So um, the short answer is yes. Okay, great. Hey, Justin, looks like you have your screen up. So you wanna take it Great. away? Great, can everybody hear me okay? We can. Okay, good. Well, thank you, Alan. Um, as was mentioned, my name is Justin Bott. I'm currently uh, working as the Vice President of Marketing for i5 Services. And it's a pleasure to be with all of you this afternoon. Um, we're gonna go through a quick demo here. And I wanna start with where you would log in uh, once you've created a login. So Connect Tennessee is a new page that's launched under the University of Tennessee Center for Industrial Services. They have a page here. We'll send you a link, of course. Um, but this is where you would start. And it's got a number of features on here. One of them is an FAQ that kind of will answer some question, more questions for you. But there's a place to request an account and then log into your Connect Tennessee account. We'll show you how, at the end of this how to request an account, give you a little bit more information about that um, at the end of the demo. But assuming that you've logged in or that you've already created an account, you're gonna, you're gonna simply log in. And when you log in, you'll come to a page that'll look similar to this. Mine's gonna look just a little bit different than what yours would because I have an admin uh, right, but by and large, this, this will be what you see. And so you'll notice uh, you've got uh, some features over here on the left. You've got supply chain, search, some exploration, and then exchange center. Where we're going to start, though, is, as Alan mentioned, the key to this platform is to have a very built-out and robust profile. And the reason is, is because you simply cannot go in, people can't go into Google or search engine or others and find very easily very complicated data. So meaning a huge data set of, of somebody who you know, has this certification, has this type of equipment, does the, this type of milling. Um, if you type all of that in a search engine, you're almost gonna certainly come back with just a, a whole bunch of crazy results because it's just too much data for the search engines to handle. So we're gonna start with showing you the process of filling out your profile and creating a profile with all sorts of information. So you'd, you'd come to your account once you're logged in. Um, I'm gonna come, because I'm an admin, I'm going to log in as if I was an account. 
So give me one second. So we have this demo account, Spock Scientific. So Spock Scientific is, let's say that that's your company. One of the things you'll do is you'll, you'll see this is the profile that you're gonna fill out. There's a general page that shows, you know, your basic information, your name, your address, short description of what you do, your social profiles, uh, of course, a logo, Dunn's number, email address, website. This is all pretty much public information that people um, would expect to see. And then you jump into industry and this is where the details start. So as you can see, you start, to, you, can, you can click on various attributes of different industries, industries that you work in. There's a lot of different choices here. Classifications, are you specifically classified as a, a small business or a government entity? Um, we do have some research capabilities in here. So we have classifications for education and post-secondary. And you can mark your SBA programs. So do you have any of those? Are you women-owned, minority-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone? And then of course your next codes, your SIC codes, and you can add, uh, you know, you can add as, as many details as you want here, the more the better so that you can be found. I'll scroll back up here. In your contact section, you can come in here and you can put, you can see this is a family run business by the Leonard Nimoy family um, for Spock Scientific. But we have, uh, you know, you put your contact in and this is what people would see. And if they are reaching out to you, they would know who to get a hold of. Your products. So if you have various types of products that you specifically build and you can, you can add those. So for instance, this is in, um, here in this demo listing, they've had, we've added an engine components product. Um, you can put the UPC numbers to that, attach files with that, pictures that are related to your products. Projects, we'll skip that because that's for research and development and, and uh, you actually won't see that, but over in services, again, same type of thing. You can list the type of services that you have and add new ones, um, you know, engineering services, whatever sorts of services you offer, add that in. And then capabilities, and this is where there's a lot of detail here and again, the more information that you put, the more likely you are to be found as primes and OEMs and others are looking for you. Um, you will rank towards the top the more information you have filled out. And so you can come in here and you can fill out processes, equipment, and you can add all sorts of equipment um, that you're looking for. That, that you, as part of your manufacturing process. You see how much detail that it really starts to add materials. Do you use the materials? Do you produce them? Do you distribute them? And so you can check all of these boxes and the algorithms behind the scene, again, they, they, they're looking at all this data and they're going to puts you at the top of the list if you're a perfect match for any sorts of needs. And we'll show you some of the, the, how those needs get posted and how you would get notified about those here in a minute. Um, certifications and recognitions. So if you have certifications, ISO, NADCAP, you know, military ones, uh, the AS 9100s, of course, a whole bunch of certifications. Those are really important to a lot of primes and OEMs as they're looking for uh, new suppliers. And then a capability statement. So many of you have capability statements already created, but um, you can add them in here. And when you add them in here, I'll pull this up real quick. This is a, a demo, but this is a capability statement for uh, JW Machine. And the nice thing is, is that in the capability statements, all of this text is actually 
readable by the backend system. And so everything that you put in your capability statement is also indexed. And so as the algorithms are running behind the scenes and they're looking for information to find a perfect match for a supplier, all of this information here is also being indexed into the system and relates to your profile. And then the last thing you could add here under capabilities is your employees and your capacities. So again, there's people who are looking for a specific supplier that has a number of uh, engineers or product floor space or whatever that is. So the more information you put, the more likely you are to be found and generate new business opportunities for you. And then gallery, if you want to add any sorts of videos or photos of things that you've made in the past, um, things that you're good at, this is where you put that. As people search, this is what they would see then. This would be the, the front end. As they search, they would come across the profile. And let's say this is you. And they can pull up your profile. And they'll see a summary of all this information. Uh, about you, the industries you work in, the ad your address, your NICS code, manufacturing capabilities. And so this is laid out for anybody who's searching for, you know, whatever they're searching for, they'll come to your profile, they'll be able to quickly see all of this. Um, they can use this menu to, to skip down to any of these sections, see what sorts of materials you work in, take a look at your capability statement, and then see, oh, okay, well, here's who I need to contact and then reach out to you. So a very easy way for uh, the buyer to find you as a small to medium manufacturer. Um, or if you are, you know, your small medium manufacturer and you're, you're also looking for parts from another small manufacturer, you can easily find them as well. And so that's the, that's the, the backbone of the information that you want to put in as an actual user to make sure that your profile is easily discoverable, is easily found. Because as mentioned uh, many times, the ability to search for this just on a regular search engine is nearly impossible uh, to be able to put out in all this information. I'm gonna come back out here now and show you the next feature, which is the search feature. So let's say that you're coming in and you are a buyer. You need a part, you need to find somebody who makes something, um, for this example, we use still. So I'm gonna type in still and it's gonna show me now a list. And if I scroll down here to the bottom, you see that we've got 8,245 hits. So, and these are, this is real data. These are all the manufacturers here in the US that have something to do with steel that's either in their name or they've listed it as a capability or a material that they work with. But over here, you can sort this. And so very similar to, to you know, different sorting capabilities you see like on Amazon or wherever you're shopping, you can come in here and you can, you can fine tune this. So I've got a whole set of filters and these filters are based on the capabilities and the profile information that's filled out again in that profile. And you can see why it's so important then to have your profile updated and make sure that it's accurate. So if I come down here and let's say um, under services, let's see, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to choose for a state. So if I, if I wanted to look at all 50 states, I can do that. So I'm gonna choose Michigan here and come back down and choose Let's see, where was it? Um, machining. So if I come here and I choose machining in Michigan under steel, I now see a list of all, um, all of the machining shops. Let's see, where did my Michigan stay? Um, may not have filtered that quite right because it's showing some states that are not Michigan. But uh, hey, Justin, if you just click apply there next to the oh, word, that's state, right. That's right. Yeah. 
So I'm going to do this. I forgot to click apply. That's why. All right. So when you see that you, you can filter this down, see the list of all the people that you're looking for. So we chose here, we chose Michigan and we chose machining. So now we, we see a, a result that's much more manageable. We can see, okay, I'm looking for somebody nearby me. If you're in Michigan and come here and here's one uh, 3D design machining. And again, this is a real profile. This is somebody here in Michigan. So you can click on their full profile, be able to see that. It's got all the information that we talked about. You can see, okay, they do three axis milling, four axis, five axis milling. Here's all the things they do. Um, here's all the equipment they have. And here's how to get a hold of them down here under contacts. So you can reach out to that person. So if you're searching, this is a really powerful search tool, again, to find exactly who you're looking for, not waste time on trying to, to find you know, suppliers that you end up interviewing and find out they're not qualified. You can do all of that ahead of time. You can find out somebody is, you know, has the certifications, the equipment, things that you're looking for, and then target directly to them um, rather than trying to spend your time finding suppliers that may or may not be qualified. Um, the next feature to show is the Exchange Center. So we've showed how if you were looking for somebody, you know, you were trying to find somebody, how to do that, and then also how to be found. And that's through the profile. And now let's look at a section here called the Exchange Center. And this is, let's say you have a need or you want to respond to a need. So if you're a small to medium manufacturer in the Exchange Center, you can come here and you can see needs that are posted. If you're a large manufacturer or a buyer, you can post your needs. And I'll show you how both of this works. So this is a list of live needs that people have. And you can see here, um, they were posted you know, yesterday, the day before, and these are very specific needs. You can click into any of them. So here's one for thermal paper. Uh, you know, Michigan, Michigan manufacturers looking for domestic manufacturers of thermal paper. You can come down and see when the end date is. If you are interested in that, you can actually choose to respond. And so as you come here, your organization would show up. Um, but I, because I have an admin, I've got to actually select one here. But you'd come here and you could actually go through... Uh, these steps to respond. So you could type in your response and respond right through the the actual uh, system here. And then they'll see that response on their end through the system. They'll get a notification. They'll see that you're interested in that. If you wanted to create an actual listing, uh, so I chose, in, I, I clicked on this one. I'm not going to make any edits because this is actually live, but this is what it would look like. So you can come in here and you can um, edit who you want to have as your contact person, edit the needs, and then you could also be able to edit the distribution. So this is where you can say, okay, I want to add criteria that this notifies everyone with the next code that has, you know, paper bag coded and treated paper manufacturing. So you can you can really fine tune exactly who you want to notify across the country so that only the most qualified suppliers will see exactly what you need and be able to respond to that. Again, I'm not gonna make changes here, but that's, that's how you would post a need in there. And you could post these needs um, as an RFI, RFQ, RFP, or other. And so you can see and then go through, you know, basic information, quantity and price, restrictions, contacts, and all that information. You can see how, as you start to build this out, you'll have, and then send it to your qualified suppliers. You can get the most qualified suppliers to immediately respond to you. You'll also be able to see your responses and or the ones that you've responded to, and then also see others that have responded, again, through your notifications. 
The last part that I want to show you is this supply chain. So let's say that you have, got to type this in again because uh, yours, of course, would just pop right up, but I'm going to view this under a demo of Prime One. But the supply chain is, is if you um, are a medium to larger manufacturer and you have a number of suppliers, you want to keep track of those suppliers. And this is a place to do that. So you can come in here, you can actually list all of your suppliers, their information, even potential suppliers. And so as you, uh, you know, put their information in, you can put their organization details in, what sorts of things they do for you, you could rank them and fill that out. Once you fill out all that information for your different suppliers, you can actually come here to a tool called the visualization tool. And so this visualization tool is a tool that will show you your supply chain. It will show you who your, your uh, suppliers are and also your potential suppliers. And then the nice thing is here, move my window over. Um, so it's got this, these different uh, squares, symbols that you see, shows you who your suppliers are, your customers. Um, and then the ones that are outlined in red are actually a flagged supplier. And so if you click on this, you'll see this Argonide Corporation has a red line around the square. That means that it's an, actually a, a supplier who has a risk associated with it. So you can open that up and it says we've identified some risks in this relationship. If I click here, show more, it's saying, well, you've got a single supplier risk. Um, meaning that you, you know, if that supplier, if something happens to them, that's your only supplier. Well, what if you need to find alternates? And it's very easy. Uh, you click down here, find alternates for this node. And what it's going to do is bring up a list now of all of the alternates, alternate suppliers that are very similar to Argonide. So I can see here, okay, here's a list of all of the alternate suppliers, and I've got, it's showing me 100 here, that I could start to filter down and pick and find some alternate suppliers. When you find those, you can actually set them up in your system, in your list as an alternate, as a potential supplier. And that's what these gray boxes are. You can set up a, a supplier as a potential alternate. So as you build this out and you see your risks, oh, I have a single supplier risk in these multiple areas, you could start to uh, map out some potential alternate suppliers so that when, if that risk ever materializes and you need to find another supplier, you, you already have, you already know three or four that you're ready to target. Maybe you've already started to develop relationships with them. And so that's the, uh, the supply chain visualization tool. Come back here into the home page. Um, and the last thing that I was going to wanted to show you is, and we'll explain a little bit what this means here in just a minute, but when you come to register, so I wanted to show you how you're going to create an account. So if you come here to request an account, it's actually going to bring you up to, let's see, I'm trying to, my Zoom screen is in the way. Let me just move a couple things. Um, so you're gonna come here to this registration page. So you click register, create an account. It's gonna take you here to this registration page. And you don't need to put in all your information right at the start. You just need to put in a little bit to get you started. And then what happens is, is because this is a tool that we only want manufacturers in, this is not a tool that's meant to have um, all sorts of companies that aren't vetted and you know how quickly those long lists be, start getting data and, and companies that aren't necessarily manufacturers. We want this to specifically be just for manufacturers. That was a big concern we heard from them. And so the process is actually a vetting process to make sure that you are a manufacturer. And, and so you put your information in, you, select I'm a manufacturer, um, come in here, put your address, uh, 
if your company already exists, you may see, according to your address, one that's already there, and you can choose that. Um, I'll skip, you know, putting the website in that for now. Put in your next codes, industries, SBA programs. You can, again, do any of that later. So I'll skip that. And then we're going to show you this code. And this is a code, a promotion code that you can put in. That CMFFTN, it stands for Connects Marketplace, Free Forever Tennessee. And what this code will do is this will give you anybody that signs up through August 31st, um, you can have not only access to Tennessee data, which is what you can get at any time through the sponsored access, but you can also have date, you, you also have access to see the entire national data set. So you'll have free forever access to all data across the country. That's typically $500 a year per organization, but with this code and through the sponsorship of University of Tennessee and the Tennessee Chamber, you can put in this code. You'll get free access to the entire data set across the country, including Tennessee. Um, and then you click register. And then after that, you will receive, um, or on our end, and uh, the Tennessee, University of Tennessee, the MEP there, they'll get a notification that you are wanting to be approved. And then at that point, uh, they will go through that and accept that. And so I'm gonna switch screens here real quick because, let's see here. because I wanted to bring up this final screen. So you should be seeing my PowerPoint now. And so, Kevin, did you want to say anything about this slide, Kevin or Misty? Um, yeah, yeah, I've just got a few um, comments. And, and Justin, thank you for walking us through um, we, we do have the link starting out for you to begin on your registration process. And after you uh, enter the information like Justin just described, uh, I'll be getting the information. I'll be noticed, uh, given a notification uh, of your intent. And then from there, you'll get a, a follow-up um, conversation. You'll have a follow-up conversation with me and your uh, solutions consultant. Now, uh, and then we'll have that follow up so that so that we can walk you through and give you the best possible um, build, you know, for your company and, and get the information and just help you through the process. Now, there is one thing. The um, second item says that approvals begin on June 22nd. Well, we're lying to you uh, because actually we can enter or get you entered into the system prior to that. So within a few days, um, probably as early as Monday of, of next week, you can go ahead and start that registration process. And it allows us to spend a little bit more time with you getting you set up into the system. So, you know, hey, that's a great deal. You get to register early and, and um, uh, you're going to get additional help at building your profile. Uh, again, we are um, sponsoring this so uh, you know the University of Tennessee the the MEP is, is going to be with you throughout it we're going to be supporting you on this process and and making it available for you and of course Justin just mentioned the free forever now that does have a shelf life so it's not available after August 31st so if you want that um, go ahead and uh, let's get you registered now again I know that you have a lot of things on your on your plate, uh, prior, you know, competing priorities. Uh, if you have no supply chain issues at all, and you have no need to grow, no desire to grow your business, then this probably will not be interest uh, to you. Um, however, for the rest of us, this is one of the, the tools that will help you uh, create a more robust supply chain. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to see it um, happening. Uh, do we have another slide after that? Uh, we do have one more slide, and it's just this 
Thank you, Slide. So I think at this point, we probably open it up to questions. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. And you do see my contact on there. So if you are having any questions or you, or, or you just need help anywhere along the line, uh, then uh, you've got my contact information and, and we'll set up a meeting to work you uh, through that. And Felicia, just, no, Missy just shared my email address and, and uh, you know, please do call me before you struggle with anything on that. We'll save you a lot of time. Uh, from there, I'd like to jump into the uh, uh, questions that have come up during this webinar. Yeah, uh, real quick, I noticed one um, from Russell that pointed out that this seems like a business version of LinkedIn. And you know, that's, some, that's a similarity that we, we draw actually quite a bit because this is very much like a LinkedIn, meaning you fill out all of your information and people can then find you and, and you can find new opportunities through them. So very similar to LinkedIn, but kind of on a hyperscale specifically for manufacturers. So great comparison. Fantastic. We do have another one from Francesca that says, is the database built based on the participation of companies set up with an account? Oh, that's a great question. I, I can take that one. Um, so to give you a little bit of an understanding of how the database has been built, we started by gathering all publicly available data that, were, that we could possibly get our hands on <laughs> to uh, help assemble the best database we had in the U.S., we quickly found out that most of the data that's publicly available in our country is actually junk and it's not very helpful. <laughs> and so we've gone through uh, years of cleaning and uh, making sure that we have a, a usable data set of good clean data. And then to that, we've also um, been working with uh, University of Tennessee uh, and the chamber for a while to make sure we've also gathered any additional data that you might have in Tennessee that would help to augment that database as a starting point. And then uh, to your question, um, the short answer is yes, from that point forward, after we've gathered as much publicly available data as we can, as we can find, then it really comes from manufacturers. The reason is, is that um, you don't find a lot of the data you will see in the database publicly available anywhere. You're not gonna find equipment and processes um, often not certifications and things like that. So um, it's really super important that uh, manufacturers lean in together. Uh, we've been building this as the solution for solving our manufacturing supply chain challenges, both at the state and national level across our entire country. And it works best when we all work together. And so, um, yes, it's, it's incredibly important that you also put your information in because uh, much of that doesn't exist anywhere else. And um, as a result of that, we're highly protective of that data. We'll make sure that uh, we're taking care of it because um, we have very strict guidelines and rules that govern the usage of that, including that we don't let anyone in who wants to use it for sales and marketing purposes. So for that purpose, uh, or for, to that end, you'll notice that there's no option to export or download data. Um, and that's intentional um, so that we can protect your data as you put it in. Yeah, and I should clarify too that on the supply chain side, that information about your supply chain is only visible to you. That is not visible to anybody else. Yeah, good point. Thanks, Justin. I have a question. I think you all did a very good presentation today first. And the question is, um, I'm focusing on that national access screen. Um, we have seven states around us. And if I'm understanding correctly, uh, that connecting to those other seven states would make this a very robust program. Yeah. First, is that correct? Because I'd like to ask you about your plans in those other states. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah, great, great question. We uh, first off the database, we have about 150,000 US manufacturers represented in every state in the union. Um, we do have focused efforts in, uh, let's see, what is that, about 12 states right now. Um, so Utah, Florida, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, Missouri, Michigan, Tennessee, Texas. Um, uh, we're just launching, getting ready to launch, I guess, Virginia, Wyoming, Nebraska. Um, we've got another dozen that we're anticipating uh, will launch before the end of this year. And then our goal is to have all 50 plus Puerto Rico by the end of next year. Okay, great, thanks. You bet. 
Okay, great. And I've got a question from the chat that um, says, give me one second here. It says, how do we get the most impact from the system? And how is it different from something like Thomas Register? Oh, yeah. Fantastic question. Um, and there are a number of answers to that question, by the way. So let me see if I can first uh, answer how you get the most impact. Um, our experience has been you get the most impact by being active and using the system, meaning uh, getting in and not only making sure your profile is complete, which is vitally important for others to find you, but also uh, utilizing the features that are there that can uh, further benefit you. Using the Exchange Center for finding things for your own organization, using the uh, supply chain tools to um, identify risks in your supply chain, visualize your supply chain, and find ways in which you can diversify and find alternates for that supply chain. Um, the more active you are, the greater the value um, you will receive. And then making sure that you're responding to those Exchange Center posts um, and uh, identifying those that meet um, the capabilities of your organization. And then uh, some significant differences to Thomas. Um, so Thomas has been acquired by Zometry now, and um, I think it, most everyone who's in manufacturing <laughs> I, I want to say everyone, but you never want to use the, uh, you know, something which is totally inclusive because I'm sure maybe there are a few people who don't. But I think most everyone knows Thomas now, right? They've been around for over 100 years. And they're that directory that we've all kind of uh, grown accustomed to seeing, you know, the big uh, binder of manufacturing information. Um, what we found, we thought ThomasNet should be the solution for our country. But we found two things that were holding them back from doing that. First off, their business model is built on typically smaller manufacturers paying thousands of dollars to get placement in search results. And we wanted to make sure that we built a solution that was not based upon pay to play, but it was based upon how can we include all manufacturers and make sure that everyone has the opportunity to be found. Um, the second thing that we found that is that made it difficult for, um, for ThomasNet to kind of play that role is it was just a, uh, not only did the business model counterproductive, but also the, the feedback we got is that most of the data, um, or I guess often uh, when someone would go to perform a search, the data was not relevant or, or current. And so that made it very difficult to find what you were looking for because uh, too many businesses that were out of date, uh, out of business and those kinds of things. We found that we we're able to solve that problem by having a very robust partner network. So uh, it's, it's no um, coincidence that uh, the MEP, the chamber and others are supporting you in your state um, they're there to help. And part of that help is to make sure that we're always keeping information current, active, up to date, and we're keeping manufacturers engaged in the platform. So some things that are significantly different from any other platform that's ever been built out there. So uh, did that answer the question, by the way? Yes, I believe it did. Um, okay. We do have another question in the chat um, from Paul Middlebrooks. He says, what about RFQ postings that are hmm. currently inactive? Can you search for previous opportunities to locate potential customers? Uh, great question. So um, you are able to see previous opportunities. Um, the and uh, some people actually do use that, I guess is probably the short answer. Some people do use that for identifying what has been searched. Um, there's some other search visibility tools that you'll start to see. Um, I think they come back in in the next release that also help you see what others are searching for to find out, you know, are they searching for the types of things that uh, match the capabilities of your company? So there's, uh, there's a number of different ways that you can get some visibility into that. Yeah, and that's a great point to, to make, which is that we do have wonderful things planned um, to continue to add more and more features, more reporting. Um, we continue to make a list hearing from manufacturers and users of it. And so the future releases will just even be better, uh, better and better over time. Well, and to add to that too, Justin, uh, one other thing that's probably important to note is 
I think we said it at the beginning, but it's worth mentioning again here, and that is this is driven entirely by and for manufacturers. So the feedback that you provide um, really is what drives the functionality in the system. So if there's something that you would like to see that maybe is not there, something would make it easier for you or more effective or more valuable, um, if you'll provide that feedback to us, you'll find that uh, pretty quickly most of those things make it right into the application. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Um, this has been a great presentation. Are there any um, additional questions from anybody out in the audience that might want to unmute their microphone and speak up? Wish I, I do have one question. If there is a company who has immediate interest to get enrolled into the system, um, when, when will it be available to go ahead and to, uh, submit a request? Oh, yeah. Um, and thank you, because I think that's worth clarifying a bit um, from what we presented earlier as well. You can request an account today. So if you go to that link and go request an account, I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, there are two steps to the process of getting in. The first one is to request an account. So you've got an account in the system. And the second one um, is really around requesting access. So you go request your account. It'll give you the option to request access at that point. And uh, I believe Kevin and the team should be uh, approving access requests, as Kevin mentioned, as early as Monday, which means, uh, you know, you can go get your account set up today and then uh, you may get a notice as early as Monday or sometime between Monday and the launch date of the 22nd. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. If, if you um, have the inclination to get in early, take a look at things early, um, I strongly encourage you to take advantage of that because I believe Kevin and the team would uh, gladly allow you to come in and kick the tires early and provide some feedback and just make sure everything's working well for you. Um, so, I, Kevin, I'm not sure if that gave the clarification you were hoping for or not, but um, hopefully that gives a little more information. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was asking. But, uh, you know, also, if you don't have all of the information, such as if you don't know your next code or anything like that, Go ahead and do it anyway. We'll help you with that information and get it populated. Yeah, and as you can see here, you can skip a lot of that, that information if you don't have it yet. Um, you, know, you can skip this page and just jump in and then go back and complete your profile after you've got the account created. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions? Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and um, repost some information that Misty had posted about the um, promo code, Kevin's email, um, and also just a reminder to go ahead and request an account and then request access. And other than that, uh, Kevin, I will let you wrap up. We're done. Uh, thank you all for attending and uh, look forward to seeing your requests very soon. Thank you.